Steve. Yes, it is. Joining us now also in the studio, Commissioner Sean Tindall of the Mississippi Department of Public Safety. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Thanks so much for coming in today, sir. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Great to be here. All right, so we got 9-11 coming up, the 20th, uh, 20th year since that tragic event occurred uh, in our country. And you guys got some special recognition going up, do you not? We do. We're uh, very, very excited to be working with the Mississippi Braves. And uh, we're going to have a, uh, a first responders night um, at the uh, Mississippi Braves game this Saturday, which will be the 20-year anniversary of 9-11, where all first responders and active duty military uh, can get into the game free. You'll be uh, getting two complimentary tickets if you show your credentials when you arrive at the game. And uh, come on out and, and, and let's re- do something that uh, recognizes those that, that continue to make those sacrifices and, of course, uh, an opportunity to uh, spend time with family and, and think about uh, those events that occurred 20 years ago. And, um, and it, it's really going to be, a, I think, a good night. We're going to have a flyover uh, with the, the Jets and fireworks after the game. And uh, uh, we've got uh, Miss Mississippi's going to be singing the national anthem. Awesome. And so uh, Colonel... Colonel Crosby Parker with the National Guard is going to be throwing out the pitch with myself and Colonel Randy Yen, and so we'll start off the game with doing that, and it's uh, hopefully going to be a beautiful night. Well, that ought to be fun, and and thank you for, for doing that. Thanks to Department of Public Safety for recognizing law enforcement, first responders, military, all involved. And even though it's been 20 years, and even though it happened in New York a long way from uh, here in Mississippi, I got to believe that the men and women of the Highway Patrol and in law enforcement in general, they feel some attachment to this, do they not? Oh, they do. Absolutely. And I think um, if you don't, you're not an American. I mean, it it was uh, a moment that we all remember. Yeah. Um, It it was tragic. Um, It it was a time, as everybody recalls, after it happened, the airlines had shut down. The the skies were um, just stars at night and, yeah. and people weren't traveling and, and games were canceled uh, we, we we took a sucker punch to the face and and we came back and came back with full force um, but I think when people also think back to that time at least I do it was a time where we kind of looked at our loved ones and we hugged them and the people we cared about and we spent time together as families and we turned off the TVs and then look focus on Saturday football yeah. or you know going places so um, and again, that's one of the things that I think is special about this event, uh, and it recognizes those first responders that routinely make their sacrifices, and, and sometimes that includes their life, yep. and an opportunity for them to come out and spend time with their family and enjoy a beautiful uh, Saturday evening in the state of Mississippi and watch some great baseball. You know, you, you, you bring up a great point that uh, I think many of us had forgotten that were around then. Is it, things just did shut down for a while. And not having those just small things, like at the time, college football, which is a big thing here in the state of Mississippi that we all look forward to. And that was canceled for a while, and and uh, certainly nobody was traveling. And really we were all, uh, I think, just kind of depressed, it seems like. But what it did, in my view, is it, it made us realize and recognize just how dang fortunate and blessed we are to live in this country, and it made you even more appreciative for those that do put their lives on the line to keep us uh, safe, be it the military, law enforcement, first responders, et cetera. But it, it's the old saying, right? You never know uh, how, how much, uh, how good things are until you don't have them anymore. And that certainly happened then. They did. They did. And in some ways, it kind of reminds you of COVID. When we, yeah. Again, as a country, we, we, we shut down. There was a, a nervousness. Uh, people were scared. I was scared, yep. worried about my family. But uh, looking back at that time when, when I had about two or three weeks where it was just myself, my wife, my kids, my mother, it, th- those were uh, it was special times in a way. Yeah, there's no question. And in fact, even though, of course, the audience knows uh, I'm an old Miss guy, the very first game I went to <laughs> after that when they restarted was the Mississippi State game. It uh, went with some Mississippi State friends, and they, and they played South Carolina, as I recall, and Lou Holtz was the coach yeah. at the time. But the feeling that came across me, and I think everybody in the stadium, when they rolled out this gigantic American flag, uh, was was something I will never forget the sight and the and the feeling of pride and emotion, you know. And it seems like we would all do better to take a little bit of pride 
uh, more pride and more recognition of the greatness of our country. And it's, it's almost gotten to the point where that's considered taboo these days. It should never be that way. It's so disappointing. Um, growing up in a, in, a, in a household where I had a father that was a veteran of Vietnam, uh, my stepdad was a veteran of World War II, both my grandfathers were veterans of World War II, um, and, and just the uh, installation of American values and, and pride in, in, our, in our country that, that I felt uh, growing up, and, and then to see the country come together after 9-11 and the, the, the patriotism that we had. And then to watch some of that fall apart over the last 20 years is very disturbing. You see, you know, obviously what's happening in Afghanistan is a, a disgrace in my mind. And, and, uh, and, you know, I don't want to ever see us have to go through anything like that. But we need, we need to come together as a country, not just when, when bad things happen, but, but when things are going, going okay. We need to keep that patriotism at a high level. And it, it's important for us as parents. I've got four kids, and uh, raising and instilling those values in them starts at home. Yeah, and, and absolutely. we got to get back to that. Absolutely. And what I recall is it, it just seemed like we all rallied around something common, and that was love for the country and uh, I think a lot of uh, just anger at those who came onto our soil, like interrupting the family. You know, we can fight amongst the family, but when you come from the outside, you've crossed over the line, and that's what it felt like. Yeah, and that's exactly what it felt felt like. And, and you know, and folks volunteered. We had NFL players that that you know quit their careers to to go right. and join and, and sacrifice their lives. Um, and so, you know, it, it was a, a kind of a sense of patriotism. I'd like to see us get back to. Yeah, I would too. Now I had uh, Major Polis on the other day, so uh, the, the Labor Day uh, was not the best for us uh, on Mississippi's roads. But the men and women of uh, the Highway Patrol and, and, of course, the first responders, they take in stride and they just do their job. Yeah, it's very difficult and it's hard. You know, I, I, and, and part of it was Ida. We, you know, we, we've tried. We've had a lot of volunteers and yeah. law enforcement and first responders going to assist our neighbors in Louisiana, which for the Labor Day weekend, uh, you know, obviously we didn't have as many folks on the road because we were helping our neighbors. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, uh, I try to tell people all the time when it comes to hurricanes, when it comes to fires, when it comes to natural disasters and and, and uh, holiday weekends when when the rest of Mississippi is preparing for a storm or going on vacation to the beach with their family, uh, your first responders are back here protecting um you uh, making Mississippi safer, and, and they really do make a big sacrifice. And, again, it's another reason why I thought this was such a great event uh, with the Mississippi Braves because it gives us an opportunity to thank all those in law enforcement and just let let them know, and, and first responders, firemen, military, let them know we appreciate what you're doing. And it's just a token of appreciation. We had some great sponsors. Uh, we had uh, several companies that, that put up the money. Uh, that uh, allowed us to give away complimentary tickets to law enforcement. And so we, we appreciate their involvement. Yeah, and, and we, we sure do. And when you see the private sector and law enforcement working together like that, that's usually when good things happen, uh, for sure, is when you have that sort of support. So it won't be too long. we got a couple of minutes left. won't be too long. We'll be kicking off the 2022 legislative session. Anything on your plate you're uh, working with uh, the legislators you're on? I can tell you uh, from my perspective, uh, the, the biggest thing that, that we're making a push for is, is uh, pay increases for our law enforcement uh, at the Mississippi Department of Public Safety. I want to get uh, our troopers and, and the other law enforcement agency salaries up. Uh, to uh, fifty thousand dollars starting. Um, that that's what some of the uh, local departments across the state are, are starting at, and I, I feel like our state law enforcement needs to be at that level as well. Um, another thing that we're going to make a push for is some sort of uh, uh, life insurance policy for all first responders, okay. um, so that you know we're seeing a number of them die with COVID, yeah. and and you know when, when that happens, our, our first responders, their families. Um, you know, ought to be uh, in a situation where they, they can, can still pay their bills and, and, and um, go their lives go on without their loved one. And, and this is a way to ensure that their financial means uh, to do that will continue. You feel like uh, that these these measures would also enhance recruiting efforts as well? Absolutely. You know, uh, you look at what's happened over the last year, year and a half uh, in, in, in protests on law enforcement and the difficult decisions that they've got to make on a daily basis. And a lot of folks are just saying, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think anything that we can put on the table, whether it's salary or making sure that if anything were to happen to them, their loved ones will be taken care of is, is a great recruiting tool. Sounds like a good plan to me. Commissioner, always good to see you, sir. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate y'all so much. 
We'll take a break right here on Middays. We'll, we'll be right back.